Say goodbye to your musty shading because we're gonna learn how to shade. But first, the first thing you gotta think about is the shape of the thing you're coloring. For example, this face right here, it's got a lot of dimension. It's not a flat surface. This tool right here lets you study the face in different angles and lighting. But to be real with you guys, it's kind of intimidating. I don't like the way he's staring into my soul like that. So before we can actually use this tool we gotta learn the basics ah yes the classic shading circle as i said earlier we gotta think about the shape of the thing we're gonna color this is a circle or more correctly a sphere because it's 3d and i know i know our teachers have been teaching this since like fourth grade you say that you already memorize every part of this circle diagram but you wouldn't be here if you've already improved your musty shading would you now the first thing we need to do is to put a light source so there might be a sun or something shining down like that. What it's gonna do is create a drop shadow, which is this thing on the ground right here. And so a lot of people are gonna think that this would be the darkest part of the circle, right? The thing is, light bounces everywhere. And so the light bounces a little bit here, making it lighter. Don't listen to those dumb as hell wiki how tutorials. Only listen to me because I know everything. So in reality, the darkest part of the circle is somewhere around here. This is called the core shadow. Okay, so on the other hand, we have the highlight over here. Yes, my personal favorite. It's very important to put highlights, as I say in every video, because that's what makes your art look juicy. It's like the cherry on top. Now that we know the basics, let's move on to the different types of shading. Cell shading and soft shading. There are probably other types of shading, but we don't care about them. They're irrelevant and they low-key look boomer. Okay, so cell shading is commonly seen in cartoons and anime styles. They're not blended, they're basically just flat like that. Now compare that to soft shading. One example of soft shading is semi-realism or like my art style. I mean, soft shading is a bit closer to reality because obviously not all shadows are flat, but like it's a stylistic choice. I like to mix both of them together when I'm doing my art. It makes it look a bit more realistic that way. But one tip I do have, the closer the light or the brighter the light, the harsher the shadows are gonna be. And obviously, the weaker the light or the farther away it is, the more blurred the shadows get. For example, we have here some juicy legs and there's a skirt right there up above. So there's a light up above, right? The skirt leaves a shadow and as the shadow gets farther away from the skirt, it's gonna get a bit blurred. Okay, so like in every tutorial, we gotta apply everything we've learned so far. First things first, brushes. Now the thing is, back when I was still using Paint Tool Sai, I only used the basic round brush because I literally did not know how to customize my brushes. And when I was using that, I literally could not blend at all. Everything ended up looking muddy as hell, musty ass paintings. Now that I use Clip Studio, I downloaded a couple of custom brushes and BAM! My coloring be popping, man. It was literally so easy. Okay, and as always, my brushes are in the description. Brushes are really important for blending or basically for anything that you're drawing. Anyway, once we got the brushes, we need a reference next. For example, when I was drawing Levi over here, I probably spent more time looking for references than drawing. That's how important references are. I'm not weak, okay? I'm just smart. And just so you guys can compare my drawing to the reference, here's the picture. The pose is the same, the lighting is the same. I basically just replaced his head and drew Levi and also like removed his hair. Oh, and also you may notice that this shadow is really harsh compared to the other shadows. Like I said earlier, the shadows are clearer because the light is harsh and also because the face is near. And you know what else I did? I simplified the shading. I didn't really put any complicated lines you don't really have to capture every shadow on your reference. The shadow helps in making your drawing look 3D. That's the whole point of shadows. And as long as you've achieved your goal, you can simplify as much as you want. I even simplify this watch because I hate drawing watches. I simplified it too much though, so it kind of sucked. So this tool right here, this is only a guide to understanding faces. Very useful, but you know, it's not a whole package. You don't have to make it look exactly like that. It's
It's just designed to make you understand the face easier, instead of like trying to study the human skull or something. Anyway, so I'm gonna share two ways that you can color the shading. So basically, two ways. The first one is really, really easy to do and is beginner friendly, and the second one is hard as hell, which is why I don't know why people use this instead of the first option. Guess which one I do. You guessed it right, folks. I use the second one because I suck. So we're gonna start with the second one which is hue shifting. I literally have no idea why I'm doing this instead of just doing the easier method. Maybe I hate myself? But first, let me explain. I mean, I've explained this dozens of times before, but to those who don't know, hue shifting is basically selecting a darker color than your base color, but then moving the hue just a little bit. So you may want to check out my coloring tutorial if you want to learn more details about coloring, but right now we're focusing on shading. The thing about hue shifting is that you're in complete control of what shading color you're going to use. It's going to give you more freedom, but other than that, I think that you Using the multiply layer is way better for beginners, at least. Using the multiply layer is one of the easiest ways to shade. Using the multiply layer is gonna make your colors look a bit more unified, a bit more put together, so this is pretty good for beginners. But here's the thing, it might be easier, but then you can't really do much with the multiply layer. I've never really been an expert in using the multiply layer, I never use it that much, but that's the point. I don't use it because it sucks. That is until I learned that people actually mix both together. So I think I got the hang of it. First, we're going to put the base colors, you know, normal flat colors. Then we're going to add a multiply layer. I literally just relied on my reference for putting the shadows. If you would notice, the colors I used were actually just light colors. Then, since my reference had a bit of sunlight going on there, I used the add glow layer to make it glow. And this is the result. And yeah, it's passable, decent, but there's something missing. I always used to think that it stops there, but then I discovered that it's not. What we're gonna do is add the juicy details. We're gonna fix the lines and we're gonna polish the drawing even more using the hue shifting method. This is probably the best method for beginners because when you're just hue shifting, you kind of don't know if the colors you're choosing are correct. You're basically just guessing. Meanwhile, when you use the multiply method thing, it still looks unfinished. So combine both methods. I started off with defining the lines even more, giving the shadows a bit more polish and then blending them, and of course adding darker shadows just to make it more interesting. And obviously, we gotta make the lips juicier. Never ever forget that. So adding the juicy details makes a huge difference. No one ever told me that. It sucks. So yeah, I see myself using this method. It's cool. I get the hype. But obviously, man, you do you. Whichever method is fine, just as long as it looks good. That is our principle. Anyway, let's do another Roast Me video. Use this hashtag on Instagram to participate and I'll see you there. Watch this coloring tutorial next if you want to level up your skin coloring game or whatever. Also, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next. Stay cool.